Good afternoon. Today I'm speaking to Mark. Hiya, Mark. Do you Hiya. want to introduce yourself and tell everyone a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, my name is Mark Eckled. I've uh, I'm a career journalist, a sports journalist. Um, who, uh, I, 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 towards the uh, towards later years, I've been uh, I've been a cricket writer. Uh, but um, when my paper decided they didn't want me to write about cricket anymore, I was uh, I was left with uh, a bit of a bit of a, an absence uh, and decided to fill it um, fill it with writing novels. So uh, I brought my first novel out in December 2019, uh, and uh, I've written two more since. So and I'm I'm just in the process of doing a fourth one. Um, I'm from Sheffield originally, I now live in Derby and uh, <laughs> enjoying writing and yeah, yeah, enjoying, enjoying finding out what it takes to be an author. <laughs> Completely um, different. Yeah, I could imagine, although it seems quite common uh, journalism to uh, write in books. I've heard quite a few yeah. people say that. <laughs> It is. It's a step. I think. I think uh, most journalists I've met have, have been frustrated writers um, because you do you do, do, do an awful lot of writing, and, and so when you are writing for the, for the job, you know you, you you're producing thousands thousands of words a day, and um, you, you might have a story. I had, I've I've had half ideas for, for for novels and such for years and years and years, and keep writing them down. I've got scribbled lumps of paper everywhere, and and these uh, these uh, word documents uh, cluttering up my computer uh, with uh, with plot ideas, and, uh, and they just accumulate. Uh, but when you're writing for a living, you last thing you want to do when you finish finish work for the day is is start writing again. So uh, it just it just never gets done. So um, in a way, they they did me a favour by telling me I've got to do a different job. But so you have to write. You get into journalism because you want to write and uh, it becomes your outlet so uh, when you haven't got that outlet anymore you need to find another outlet <laughs> uh, did you know you wanted to write from when you were a child yeah more or less i was uh, I've, I've, I've always been kind of a sport fanatic uh so i wanted to be a player of course every kid wants to be a player I wanted to either play centre forward for Sheffield United or open the batting for Yorkshire, but uh, unfortunately, I was uh, I was crap at, uh, <laughs> at both sports. So, so, uh, so, I then decided I wanted to uh, to be a, a sports writer. Um, I made my mind up when I was about eleven, something like that. I was going to be a sports writer, and uh, got there. So I've always been writer. I wrote my first, um, my first attempt at a novel when I was about nine, or something like that. It was uh, it was a, 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 a story called Sacktown, which I, I've still got, by the way. It, may, it still might make it in a finished form, but uh, I, I think uh, I think the estate of Lewis Carroll might have. Uh, oh, that's mine. Sorry. The estate of Lewis Carroll might have something to say about that because it, <laughs> it, it, it bore staggering resemblance to Alice in Wonderland. So uh, it wasn't entirely original story. <laughs> and have you always been a big reader? Um, yes, yeah, probably more so when I was young. I, I did a, um, I did a, a, an English literature degree um, because I loved reading. Um, I've always, always been, uh, always, always wanted to. I always had plenty of books on the go, but more lately, I, I, I'm actually finding I'm, I'm reading less these days than uh, than I used to, uh, which, which is strange. So, uh, so I'm, I still, I've, I've still always got a book on the go, but I, I, I used to get through an awful lot more than I do now. That's for sure. Yeah, don't know why that should be actually. <laughs> Is he too busy writing, maybe? Yeah, and, and other stuff, and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done um, English Itch to A-level, and nothing put me off reading more than having to pick books apart and <laughs> try and find hidden meanings I'm sure the authors really didn't put in there. <laughs> I, know. I know, it becomes very clinical then, isn't it? Very, 
very forensic, I must say. Don't mind me saying yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I, I I can completely understand that. It did put me off for a for a while as well. Uh, but uh, it, at the same time, when when you do settle down from that, you do realise that um, that seeing books that way gives you an insight and an appreciation um, for for what the author was trying to say and what what they were trying to attempt. So and and that stays with you for life, even though you don't no longer feel a compulsion to write a 3000 word essay on uh, on the uh, on on a certain theme within within a, a, a st series of books you 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 do then understand why uh, the questions were asked it, if you like and then you can you can you can read a book your own way then without uh, being told you should look for something specific so it does have benefits if I had to read Mill on the Floss, I will never forgive them for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, I feel the same way about Jane Austen in lots of ways. <laughs> um, so why did you choose to write in the genre that you write in? Uh, I think I think it's just it's just because it's the way it developed, really. It, it sounds it sounds odd. odd to say that, doesn't it? it? Just, but on in the, uh, I didn't, I didn't sit down and think, right, I am going to, uh, I'm going to do a thriller here. Um, it just became the book that it became, the first one. Um, others I had, I had uh, sketched out weren't necessarily thrillers. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't um, body stripping romances or anything like that. But uh, you know, is do this uh this first book that i decided to go for sunbeam uh, was the one that was clearest in my head when i sat down to write and so it had to come out so and that was the way it came out so having done that first time um i, I just felt more inclined to to do the same for the second and third and probably will the fourth fifth and sixth but they're, they're all certainly the three so far have been have all been very different in their own way um i've, I've not really been able to contemplate doing a a series yet i, I couldn't i don't think i could ever do a you know a, a cop with a difficult past to uh who doesn't play by the rules kind of thing and and you know it, it I don't think I could do that. No, no disrespect to anybody who does, but and because there's a lot of people who do it very, very well, but it's just not the kind of book I want to read or the kind of book I want to write. So I won't. It's fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm completely fine with people right now. And I do actually read these books as well. I really like uh, Linwood Barclay. I, I think he's he's superb. Uh, so, I, but uh, I just kind of get the feeling that that, that genre has been done uh, by people who are a lot better than I am. So I want to find my voice in amongst all that and, and write in my style. And, and this is the way I want to do it. Yeah, fair enough. Whether it works or not is another thing. <laughs> yes, it's too early to tell yet, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But I get a lot of fun doing it, so. <laughs> um, if you were to be transported um, into any of your books as a character, which one would you choose? I'd have to say I'd go for for um for the main character in the first one uh who um is in, in sunbeam he's uh he's 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 buffeted about by all sorts of uh all sorts of strange and, and wonderful events and uh and and he's pushed to the very limits so i'd uh I felt closest to him because I kind of felt sympathy with him. So having created him, I think I'd have to step into his shoes as uh, as some kind of punishment and uh, and see how I handle it, see if I handle it as well as he did. 
<laughs> so there's a, bit, there's a bit of self-flagellation in there, I guess, but uh, he also gets a, a, a very, I also did give him a very beautiful girlfriend, so there'll be fringe benefits. <laughs> Uh, what's been your favourite moment uh, being an author so far? Um, I really enjoyed. I, I brought out my first one, as I said, in November 2019. I, I, I because it was all new to me, I, I, I was just kind of feeling my way through it. But uh, I set up um, a few meetings in libraries uh, and and uh, to to just talk and to just meet people and to try and try and flog a few books. But uh, I only managed to get one of them in, uh, which was uh, on March the 9th in, in 2020. I, I went to a library in Sheffield and uh, about 20 odd people turned out uh, and just talked and talked to them and answered questions. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed it, just the interpersonal bit. Um, I, think, I think that comes down to um my training my journalism career um that's all I, that's that's the, the, they were always the most enjoyable parts of of being a journalist were, were meeting people talking to people finding out about them and and so to to meet people who have read what you have written and are asking you questions about it and, and are interested was was a fantastic experience i really enjoyed that and i can't wait for the time when i can do more of that <clears throat> and what's your biggest dream as an author um just to be read just to to have lots of people read what i've written and to enjoy what i've written um you know, I'd, I'd love to be a million selling award winning whatever that's fine that's fine but it, I, I went into this and and said and, and and i didn't i didn't say it because i wanted to sound uh, sound like i was setting my bar low or anything I, I just said if uh by doing this um i could meet one person who's read my book one person I didn't know who's read my book and enjoyed it, then I would I would consider what I'd done to be, be a success. Um, and I still stand by that, really. It's, it's, if, if it could make that 100,000 people who I don't know who, who, who read my books and, and, and enjoy them, then that'd be even better. Uh, you, you go into, again, you go into journalism because you want uh what you write to be to be read by people otherwise there's just no point no point doing it is there you know you could write pulitzer prize winning stuff all the time but if no book is reading it then it's, you you've, you've failed as a communicator you um you set out you write for people to read so that is my dream is for is for as many people as I could possibly expose my books to, to read my books. Th that would be it. That that's all I want. Apart from it to be fabulously rich, obviously. Oh yeah, who doesn't want that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Private <laughs> island, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, have you made lots of author friends? Um, a few, but then again, you know, I'm I am I'm a lockdown author. So I've I've not been able to go to Harrogate or go to book fairs and things like that. I've I've never done one. Um, I've I've met a few um, through through Facebook and such, and um, I've I've actually physically met one, which is which is wonderful, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> lady in, uh, in in Sheffield called Anita Waller. Uh, <laughs> it was um, you know we, we kind of gravitated towards each other because the uh, she lives um, only about a mile and a half, two miles away from from where I was brought up, and um, she made contact with me. And, and uh, when I, I had a, I pulled a few strings and got an article in the Star when I was starting out, 
and uh, she read that and that led her to my first book and she got in touch with me and, and just to say hello and uh, and we've met up a couple of times and um, yeah she's she's been exceptionally supportive so she's about the only one <laughs> a lockdown author yeah there's quite a few <laughs> if you read any of her books her cat and mouse series is probably one of my favorite series okay, such great yeah. characters I've them. only read the first one of them yeah they're, they're, she's excellent I started by reading uh, the uh, captor was the first one I read of hers. Uh, Gamble I've, I've read um, and uh, uh, Angel. Is it Angel the first? No, Beautiful is the first, isn't it? Beautiful the first. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've read, I've read those. I think. Yeah, I think that's all I've read so far. I'm, I'm looking forward to the new one. She's got uh, got one out just now, hasn't she? On the yeah. Nine Lives. Yeah, she's yeah. I'll prolific. She she produces them all the time. She's she's absolutely <laughs> astonishing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't keep oh. up. I know. I don't know how some of these do it. It's mad. <laughs> but then, as a prolific reader, the people that churn out one a year is just very annoying. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's too long. Yeah, I try for two a year. As you know, I'm still working. I'm still working, so I'm, I'm, I do it when when I'm not working. But uh, but uh, you know Anita's retired now, so I suppose that helps. But uh, but even so, she is she's absolutely prolific. <laughs> um, and do you get much feedback from readers? Uh, yes, I do get a bit. Uh, I, I, I've tried to connect with readers as much as I can by uh, by joining book groups and and. Uh, on on Facebook and uh, I started an art group as well for this uh, for this last one. Um, so it's just as a way of trying to connect with people. And because I, th I think you do need that feedback, you do need uh, a sounding board. You do need to um, to get people to tell you honest opinions. Um, because you you can you know you get so wrapped up in in what you're writing that you you can't see it after a while. I, I always I always um, liken it to, uh, to to painting a, a huge canvas uh, about some spectacular scene. Uh, you, you know you get so wrapped up in the detail of it. You, it's not until you take twenty yard twenty steps back that you you can actually see the picture, um, and you need. To, to need to have people around you who can who can tell you uh, where you've gone wrong, where you where you need to expand, where you've, what you've done well. Uh, so so I try to connect with readers as much as I can uh, and, and get as much feedback as I can because you you just need that opinion. I think I think it's valuable. I don't know anybody could possibly do without it. <laughs> no, if um if I speak to any new authors, I try and encourage them to get an art group. Because not only do you get that feedback, but you've also got a cheerleading squad, basically, for when your book's yeah. out, you've got however many people that are all going to share your posts and share their reviews and stuff. I mean, what more could you want on, on the release of a book? So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't know what an art group was until uh, until it was Anita who, who said, have you got an art group? And I went, uh, what's an art group? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Should I get one? <laughs> What's it mean? <laughs> but she was right, as ever. She's always right. She she writes about most things apart from the football team she supports. Completely wrong. <laughs> well, she can't have everything, can she? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the most interesting thing you found out researching your books? Hmm. Ah, uh, right. That is a good one. That is a good one. Because um, I've got I've got my pet sources. So I should say the most interesting thing I've I've found out would be in researching the second book, which is called Family Business, uh, which is set in a haulage company. So I went to spend a day. Uh, and uh, with uh, with the bloke who ran the haulage company, and he 
showed me around and told me exactly what they do just gave me a flavor of of, of everything uh, everything in there just so i'd got it fixed in my mind for when i start describing it and talking about it so i think the most Im interesting thing i found was that was that uh, they got an additive uh, that they put into the uh, into the engine called add blue and uh He's he, he showed me the showed me this thing. He says, he says this is the dispenser. This is the ad blue. He says and it keeps uh, it, it keeps down the uh, keeps down the emissions uh, from the engine. And he says he says basically it's pig's piss. So I thought that was interesting. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm still not sure how they managed to get it from the pig to <laughs> or whether it it actually is. He says, but that, that's probably the most interesting thing I've found in research. Would you believe I used to work in a petrol station that had a truck stop attached to it? So I know exactly what a blue is. Ooh, right. <laughs> well, you went up on me. I didn't know. I didn't even know there was there were four different types of trucks. I didn't know that. Flat backs, um, curtain side, box and reefers. Reefers mean refrigerated. Noisy buggers so is what I remember them being. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. I now know all about tricking. Everything. Yeah. It's uh, it's an interesting world, isn't it? I um I worked the the site I worked on had a petrol station, a truck stop and a cafe, like a greasy spoon truckers cafe, and we used to sell all the um accessories and some of the stuff was just insane of right. all the accessories they had um ovens and toasters for the lorries and yeah it was uh it was great. quite something <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're great yeah huge fridges and things like that they've got in there yeah yeah it was um yeah it was a real eye open until i had to count it every month and then it was just like <laughs> Like a million <laughs> types of bulbs and I had to count them all one by one by hand. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how that might get a bit uh, tedious. Oh, yes. Mm. And we, we used to see the illegals quite often as well. Um, all right. Sometimes um, cutting open the curtains to jump out, sometimes running out the back. Or sometimes just sit in there and get arrested. Yeah, it was quite frequent. We saw. Good God. Yeah, wow. it was a fun job that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Never a dull moment. No. Or uh, when a lorry driver dresses up in a short leather skirt and heels. <laughs> <laughs> well, a male one or a female one? Male. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of a he was... boat. I can't remember if he was off to a stag do or if it's Christmas, but you know, the image has never left me. <laughs> which is quite concerning. Are you sure he was actually off to a stag do or, or some kind of This is what party he told me. Well, this is yeah, what I chose it, to believe, but I don't um, need to know. <laughs> quite frankly, if I got discovered in the cap of a lorry wearing short leather skirt and, and heels, I'd make up some kind of story as well. Yeah, we had um, a strip club anyway next to the petrol station. So um, we saw them walking over to the strip club quite frequently anyway. So, and they used to have statues and stuff. So this is what I chose to believe. And it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think uh, I think you're, you're wise to draw a veil. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> that was a fun draw, which is yeah. good. <laughs> yes. Um, so you said you have all these ideas for plots stored on your computer. So are they going to yeah. be future books or have you discarded them as rubbish? Uh, some are rubbish. Yeah. Um, I've got at least three, which, uh, which are uh, kind of formed in my mind now and and we'll we'll definitely get done that's possibly four uh there's another one there which will need a bit of work but might work so so i think you know that's and, and you keep 
you keep thinking, don't you? Other ones occur to you. The one I'm working on now, I, I only uh, only really came to me as as an idea um, a few months ago, and it's kind of jumped the queue. <laughs> so because I decided I wanted to do this, so you do it, don't you? You just you just kind of have to decide which one you you fancy doing at the time, which one's most 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 uh, most um formed in your mind and uh, and 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 will uh, you know will, looks like it will be able to take off so i'll go with that yeah there's there's a fair few around and still there's still room for a few more i'm sure might even look at one or two of those that I've, I've come close to deleting and and see if there's anything can be salvaged but uh, quite frankly I've, i doubt it with some of them <laughs> Um, what's your biggest fear and would you ever write about it? Uh, well, yeah, the biggest fear would be, would be, uh, it'd be the, the really big fears. I don't, I don't tend to worry about little stuff like uh, uh, you know, whether, whether anybody would uh, tell me they don't like me anymore or something like that. So the, so the biggest fears are... are, are be the really big fears of of kind of you know um being alone and uh, and and all sorts of stuff like that so I, I don't i don't tend to worry about stuff that's out of my control uh so that that cuts out cuts out a, a few few minor fears really i'm quite laid back and uh, what i would what i would write about is uh, is is the kind of thing that I'd, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to explore. Um, like uh, one of my ideas um, for for the future is uh, examines um, paranoia, and um, especially you know the paranoia of of conspiracy theories. So um, so that that's something I'm going to look into in the thing that. that I, I'd say it sounds sounds like I'm I'm such a lucky guy, but I I try to stay away from irrational fears and 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 being scared of stuff that might not happen. I I, I deal with stuff when it happens. So uh, so I, I don't have any major fears apart from um apart from being stuck down the bottom of a mine and nobody being able to get you out that kind of thing. It wouldn't uh, scream if you saw a spider or cling on if you were up high or anything like that. Then I'm not very good with heights. I'm not very good with heights, but um, I won't let that stop me going to the top of the Eiffel Tower or or or, or climbing up to the the highest turret of a castle. That kind of thing. I, 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 I think uh, I think fears like that, which uh, which are which are not irrational, they're uh, the the perfectly reasonable fears. But I think I think unless you face them, then they rule you. So you can't you can't let them beat you, can you? Absolutely, except for roller coasters, which yeah. is rational, and I won't go anywhere near them because <laughs> they're terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> It's a choice, isn't it? You, you just you, you don't have to. But uh, but but with stuff like you know, they, they, I I do get I do get uh, I do get a bit shaky when when uh, when I'm up high and uh, and there's nothing around me. But uh, you just kind of kind of push yourself on a little bit, don't you? You just kind of <laughs> kind of grit your teeth, and it don't make it any better, I must say. <laughs> but some stuff you got some stuff you got to do. I think. It's too late by then anyway, isn't it? You're up there, especially like the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. If you're up there, then yeah. you can only go back down yeah, again. Yeah, so yeah. get on with it or yeah. we'll go back. Feel feel the fear and do it anyway. I think that's the uh, that's the maxim. Um, if you were able to spend a day with any author, dead or alive, who would you like to spend a day with? Absolutely, Charles Dickens. I would love to spend time with him. He's my he's my, my utterly favourite author. 
I dare I, I, I devour stuff that he he writes. I, I think he's uh, he had such a talent um, for for comedy that uh, I, I don't think very many people have been able to uh, been able to match since. I I love his his plots and how complicated and convoluted they are and uh, and how he uh, how he paints these caricatures of characters that can get away with it uh so so yes he uh, he definitely be a fella i'd like to have a sit down for a pint with but with people people who are alive i'd uh, i'd quite like to to have a meet up with uh, with jonathan coe I, I think he, i think he of the of, of the current authors, if you like, I, I think he's probably my favourite because he, uh, again, he, he's, he he tries to write in a way that's different to others, and he's not not scared to to try uh, to try different stuff. Um, I think he's a very brave author, um, so I'd, I'd like to get to know a little bit more of, of what goes through his mind and in his processes. So, yeah, he'd be, he'd be a good choice, but Charles Dickens, yeah, what a guy. <laughs> yeah, popular choice as well, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not surprised. He's, he's timeless. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I completely agree. Mm. Um, so what do you like to do when you're not writing? I still love sport. Uh, even though I don't get to see any for, for work these days, I still I still love sports. I miss live sport uh, hugely uh, since since lockdown. Um, but uh, I'm, I've got the cricket season starting tomorrow. In fact, it starts, uh, and uh, I, I love watching live cricket still. So, uh, and I've still got my press accreditation. So I'm I'm hoping to. Uh, to sneak in um, to, to watch a bit of live cricket next week when uh, when the first game is played in Derby. Uh, so yeah, that that takes up a lot of time. I, I do. I like to I like to travel as much as I can. Again, you know, in normal times, uh, I like to see different places. Uh, I don't very often go back to the same place twice. Um, and uh, I, love, I love spending time with my partner. Uh, we don't we, we've spent far too much time with each other in this last year, <laughs> and we, but we still haven't killed each other. So I think that's uh, I think that's a decent sign. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, 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 just just spending quality time really is is uh, is is great. But but uh, the, the live sport aspect is, uh, is is something I'm really looking forward to picking up again when we're able. I used to watch an awful lot more. I used to spend spend time spend time with my boys as well. I've, I've got two sons, and uh, we we both got to share uh, share a, a love of, um, of of live sport and and live music. So um, being able to go to gigs with with my lads and, and go to a football match with my lads is is something I really look forward to again. So. Um... Once lockdown's over, you've got one sports event, one music event, um, and one country you can visit. What are you top of your lists? Uh, a sport event would be um, the first day of a test match at Lords, which is something I've I've never done yet, but uh, that's that's high on the list. It would either be that or the first day. Of the Boxing Day test in uh, in in Melbourne in Australia, no matter when Australia against whoever, it doesn't matter. Just to go to go to the first day of the Boxing Day test at the uh, at the MCG would be would be high up on my list. So it's it's definitely one of those two. Uh, for a, for a for a gig, I'd. Uh, I've I've got a twice postponed gig, um, which I'm looking forward to now. Has been rearranged for 2022, so I'll put that at the top of my list. Uh, that's going to be Pearl Jam um, and the Pixies, uh, two bands who, who've been 
favourites for a long, long time. Uh, I've not seen either. So it's a, it's a good chance to, uh, to kill two birds with one stone there. That's going to be at Hyde Park in London uh, next year now. So we'll go for that. And, uh, and a country. I'm going to go back to... Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go to New Zealand. I was going to say go back to, to go back to America because there's still lots of places in America I haven't seen yet. But uh, New Zealand is, uh, is is a trip that um, myself and my partner have been promising ourselves for a long time. Uh, and it became worse when uh, when my eldest son got married a uh, year before last and he, he went to New Zealand for his honeymoon because he'd, he'd had his mum and dad telling him how wonderful New Zealand it probably is for ages and ages. So he went to bloody gazumpters and uh, and and went out there without it. So so now we've absolutely positively got to go to New Zealand at some stage. <laughs> yeah, but it's not the kind of place you can just pop over to. So it's, it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, it's going to take some planning. Right. Yeah, it's going to take a bit of saving up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My auntie's been twice for a month each time, and oh. she loved it as well. Right. Nobody said yes. a bad word about the place. No, her friend that she went with moved out there. Actually, she lives out there now. So, yeah, it must be all right. Well, the great people as well. I've met a few Kiwis in the course of work, and uh, they seem seem really spot on people. Yeah, so, as long as you don't tell, as long as you don't accuse them of being Australian, they're fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, was it the former? Former Australian PM, it was, always made me laugh. And uh, uh, somebody was interviewing him and, and said, uh, "said So, are, are you concerned that uh, that a lot of New Zealand youth um, are emigrating to Australia?" And he says, uh, "He says no. He says not really concerned. He says the way I see it, it's uh, it's pushing up the uh, average IQ of both nations." <laughs> 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 Actually, that was quite good answer. <laughs> it's a very good answer. I love that. <laughs> it's not going to win you many friends, but it's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, well, it's memorable as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so, if that's what New Zealand people are like, if they can make jokes like that and the leaders can make jokes like that, then they're my kind of people. Well, the leader of New Zealand seems to be the only one that has any idea of what she's doing, has oh, she's super. handled the pandemic brilliantly. And yeah, yeah not at all jealous when we no, look at I... Boris with his hair sticking in about 50 directions, blabbering. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Do not get me started about that, man. <laughs> no. Yeah, politics. Is just... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm from the People's Republic of South Yorkshire. I can't. Uh, <laughs> Can't be doing with Boris Johnson. No, many people are the same, I would think. <laughs> <laughs> so I've given you enough time now. What's your most embarrassing story? Oh, I wish I could come up with one. I, I, I really, I'm, I'm. I don't get embarrassed very often. I, I think it work related. I, I, oh God, I think it. <laughs> even with even with prior notice, I'm 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 struggling to come up with a a real belter. I'm afraid. I've not got one. I've not got one. I don't get embarrassed very often or very easily. I, I suppose I've got such a thick skin that uh, <laughs> it makes me very, very difficult to uh, to shame. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Donna. I'm going to have to let you down. And you're the second author. That's disgraceful. That's, that's pathetic, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not okay. trying to protect myself, honestly. I just... I just... <laughs> that's fine. Um, so what would your partner and your friends and family say your worst habits are? Oh, I've got plenty of them. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> I've, not, I've got no embarrassment, but uh, I've, I've got plenty of bad habits. I, I think... My partner would definitely say my sense of humour is my worst habit, because uh, <laughs> because uh, it, it's, it's 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 terrible sometimes. It really is appalling sometimes. And she 
she unfortunately is in the position where she gets to hear the jokes that I make several times. So most people are just, <laughs> most people are only exposed to them once, but she gets to hear them several times when I've forgotten I've told them and she'll let me know about that and just tell me to shut up. <laughs> Uh, so, so yes, I'd, I'd I'd have to put that down as my as my worst habit. Um, and do you and your partner have pet names for each other? No. You don't. No, no. I I I would I would say emphatically no because I I hate stuff like that. I must say, <laughs> I really do hate stuff like that. And, and and I'm sorry if I'm treading on any any toes here, but people who give names to their cars as well I, I just oh, drive me around shit. the bend <laughs> it's 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 terrible we call each other I, I, sue and mark <laughs> or if, if we're feeling really really um affectionate or whatever or or, or or loose one day it might be might be sue's and it might be marky and that's it that's <laughs> as close as we get we don't get we don't get any snugglums we don't get any uh, <laughs> whisker face or anything like yeah it's just just no I can't, I can't stand things like that it drives me around the bend <laughs> <laughs> we're not that kind of people no I see that <laughs> <laughs> um who was your first celebrity crush uh Kate Bush I was wildly wild I still am wildly in love with Kate Bush uh she, who is, uh, is is maybe she's maybe three years older than i am um but when i was 17 18 and she brought out wuthering heights and uh i was, was completely transfixed by her and then she followed that up with a man with a child in his eyes and that's that still as the uh, the, the video still has the ability to uh, reduce me to a, a kind of mushy pulp in the on, on the floor and uh i just thought she was the most beautiful of women first off but to be that inventive and that talented a songwriter and singer uh at the same time was was just a, a complete package for me so yes i was i was completely in love with Kay bush and 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 as I would still run away with her if the offer came tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, I take it your wife knows about this, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. She knows she can't <laughs> compete. She has no, she has no chance of competing. But then again, I'm, I'm not going to. If, if Jamie Dawn came knocking on the door tomorrow, then I'd be out. So uh, you just have to live with the reality sometimes, don't you? <laughs> Uh, probably you have uh, less chance of Jamie Dornan turning up than Kate Bushell, I would say. You think? Yeah, I think so. I'd, I'd say both are fairly unlikely, in, fair, in fairness. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but, you know, on a balance <laughs> of probabilities, I think Jamie Dornan's quite busy. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, yeah, Kate just kind of keeps to herself now, so she's not going to she's not going to come to Derby and, and see, you know, can anybody tell, tell me where that that bloke who, uh, who who used to go all gooey eyed when he was seventeen over my videos is it? Yeah, you know, it's, it's just not going to happen. I'm, I'm I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. I can live with that. I'll just watch the video to Babushka again, and I'll be fine. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what's next for you? Uh, I'm I'm about a couple of three thousand into into my next one, uh, which is going to be an, another thriller. Uh, it's uh, I, I'm, I must say I'm, I'm struggling a bit with it at the moment. I'm, I'm just kind of not in a place where I'm in in tune with it at the moment. It, is, it, it will come, but I'm kind of knocking words out and it's a bit like chiseling them out of stone at the moment but uh, you know that that's just happens um but uh, I, I, th I think the story is going to be good 
when I can get into it, it's uh, uh, the setup is a uh, a policeman uh, who loses uh, a major um, murder case uh, and uh, suffers a, 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 a huge heart attack um, in the in the immediate aftermath, and. Um, then I go back to him a couple of three years later, and he's still he's still finding it difficult to deal with his failure of this uh, of this case, and and he wants to pick it up again, even though he's retired from the police. Um, so he uh, he attempts to uh, to to find the evidence that he was lacking uh, to get the conviction uh, that he needed the first time around, the crucial evidence, uh, and starts digging around. And uh, that, that is the setup for, for how this one's going to go. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will get into it. It's just, uh, just at the moment, I think I've put, I've put so much energy into the launch for, uh, for Catalyst um, a, a couple of three weeks ago that I, I, I think it, I found it difficult to start with the writing again to get going with the writing again. But, you know, it comes back. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope so. No, I really <laughs> well, there's no doubt about it. It, it, it will. It will. It's just saying, uh, you know, just sometimes you just, yeah. Sometimes it comes. It flows easily, doesn't it? Sometimes you sit down and and before you know it, three thousand words are perfectly formed on your screen, and and sometimes you sit there contemplating uh, two hundred and fifty, and 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 it, it's hard work. I'm, I'm just at the hard work stage a little bit now. But you persist. Yeah, you better do. Otherwise, I'll message you daily and nag you. Oh, thanks very much. That's what I need. That's the service <laughs> I can provide free of charge. It's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> you should look to try and monetize that. Yeah, I might have to, actually. That and stalking, I reckon. i would be rich. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, oh, sorry, go on. I was going to say, I have no more questions for you, unless there's uh -oh. anything you think I haven't asked that you would like to tell us about. Uh, not really. I, I don't. I don't find it. I don't find it entirely easy talking about myself. As so I'm, I'm, I'm never likely to volunteer information. That's, <laughs> that's, I think that's partly why I became a journalist, so I can I can have fun asking. Other people questions and making them squirm. So, so thanks to you. And um, next time I conduct an interview, I'm going to ask them what their most embarrassing moment is, and, <laughs> and see if they're as as uselessly unable to come up with something as I was. <laughs> yeah. Well, Peter James told me a story this morning. And Peter May, I mean. Um, so most people have one. Like I said before, we spoke before we started recording. It's usually involving alcohol and nakedness with men. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must have had so much alcohol and got so naked that uh, I completely blanked out of my mind. Yeah. I'm going to keep asking you in case you think of anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there have been so, so many so many nights when, when I was a student in Huddersfield when I woke up in houses not knowing where the hell I was. So there's, there's been those. There's been those, but I, I never regarded that as embarrassing. I just regarded it as part of the natural processes of, uh, of being a student. <laughs> yeah. Which student hasn't done that? <laughs> or perhaps I've just done something so completely embarrassing that I, I don't even tell you because, you know, because people then start wondering where the bodies are hidden. Well, yeah, I always wonder this when people won't tell me, but, you know. <laughs> That's fair. I'm, I'm, I'm an entirely open book. I've ne I never keep secrets, really, but uh, perhaps I'm just so dull that I don't have anything embarrassing that, uh, that, that's, that's worth sharing. Well, technically, we were here to talk about your books, which we did, so that's fine. <laughs> We've covered that, so the embarrassing stories is just by the by, really. Yes, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, love, love the writing, love the writing bit. So, got to carry on doing that. It's it's going to uh, 
it's going to one day lead to fame and fortune, so you've got to carry on doing it. Yeah. I'll just add the embarrassing story onto the nagging e message every day. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll build it into the next the next book somewhere. If I can think of think of a real Brahma, I'll build it into the next book and um, send you a copy and then uh, let you work out what the real embarrassing <laughs> story is. I love that idea. Actually, <laughs> actually, I did put one of my, one of my one of my most embarrassing stories, um, student related and drink related, into um, into my second book, into family business, was uh, was was an episode in that was based on on an actual event where I woke up in a in a strange room with a, with a, with a strange girl, and and then decided I was going to have to be horribly sick. So. It wasn't the most romantic of uh, <laughs> settings. I imagine that's fairly common as well with its students. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll be it. <laughs> well, would you like to tell everyone where they can find out more about you and where they can find your book? Uh, yes, well, all of them have been printed through uh, through Kindle, um, through uh, through Amazon, um, which is uh, I've, I've, I've nothing but uh, nothing but good words about it really because it's uh, it's it's a it's a way of enabling authors to to be become published in a in a very straightforward way. It's, it works for me. Uh, so so I'm, I've got a author page on on Amazon. Uh, I've also got my own website, which is uh, markecklid.com. Uh, I'm reaping now the benefits of having a, an exceptionally uh, uh, unusual surname, in so much as uh, uh, nobody else seems to seems to have it. So I can I can set up all these domains with with very straw, uh, straightforward names, and uh, and. Be in no uh, in no danger of them clashing with other people's. So um, so yes, uh, if people can remember my surname, then they can find me easily. Awesome. Well, that's all I have for you. I think. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. It's been lovely talking to you about. <laughs> Thanks for the opportunity. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>